In this video, we're going to go over how to make QuickBooks work for you when you're tracking retainage. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do, you're going to go into your items list, and we are going to create a new item, and it's going to be an other charge. Okay, the item name is going to be retainage, retainage receivable, whatever you want to call it. All right, um, we're going to go ahead and say the description is 10% retainage. Okay, the amount is 10%. <clears throat> Non-taxable, taxable. And what account is it going to go to? Retainage receivable. Okay, so that one that we saw here is an income account, but we want it to go to an other current asset account, so an AR account, accounts receivable. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and set this up. Again, I don't want it to be an income account. I don't want it to be a real accounts receivable account because those are hand handled somewhat differently in QuickBooks um, where you can't post certain things to it and all that. So I'm just going to call it another current asset for now. All right, then go ahead and say save and close. So again, the first thing you want to do is create the item. <clears throat> My spell check is picking up on that. Okay, so first things first, we don't have estimates turned on in this file, so I'm going to go up to Edit, Preferences, over to Desktop View, My Company Preferences, select Estimates, and turn those on. Okay. <clears throat> so now we have my estimates or change orders in here. All right, I'm going to create an estimate for the Robert Allard remodel project that we're working on. And we're going to go ahead and say we have some electrical work to do, about 10 hours, and we have some plumbing to do, about 10 hours. And we have some roofing, again, about 10 hours, okay? And then we also, um, you know, I usually do a sub subtotal in here, all right? So it gives a subtotal, and then we have our total retainage, all right? Okay. So this is the, the estimate that we're going to give over to them, and um, then we're going to go ahead and start the project. So I'm going to say save on this, okay, and I'm going to go ahead and create an invoice. All right, so right now this estimate, when I created it, it's not a posting transaction. It doesn't hit any accounts. None of this is a sale. This is not holding anything back for retainage. I'm going to go ahead and create an invoice, okay? All right, so from here, notice how it holds out the retainage again there, but what we're going to do is we're actually going to only bill for half the job. We're going to do uh, progress, okay? Now, again, progress invoicing isn't turned on in my system, so I want to go up to Edit and Preferences, Jobs and Estimates, Company preferences, do you do progress invoicing? Yes. Okay. All right, so let's go back into that customer here, open up that estimate, and let's do that invoice again. So we're going to go ahead and create the invoice. It's going to tell me for the whole estimate or for part of the estimate. What do you want to do here? So I'm going to create the invoice for a percentage of the estimate. I'm just going to say 50% for now. Say OK. <clears throat> now everything's going to come across the estimate amount. The quantity is going to be half of what it is because I said 50%. And notice we have that subtotal in here, so they're paying half. They're also going to pay half of the retainage. Okay. So it's a it's a easy way to or not pay half they're also going to remove half of the retainage i should say 
All right, so the total due on this invoice is 92137. I'm going to uncheck to be printed, and I say save on this. Okay. So now the retainage account is diminished, right? It's, it's gone down. Um, I mean, it's gone up because it's a negative on here. So let's go ahead and look at what this means as far as our journal entry. Okay, we're going to get into the debits and credits of this a little bit. So accounts receivable is debited $921 for the full amount. Sales income for the $921 is there. And then we're going to have a debit. So retained receivable is going to go up. Okay, so that's what happens on this. So I'm going to go into my chart of accounts and to retain it receivable, the other current asset account. Here we go. And double click on it because it has its own register. Here is the $102 in retainage that we have. Okay, so let's go ahead and say save and new and do the remodel again. We're going to do it from the estimate for the remaining amounts. It's going to bill out the remaining amount. It still has the retained receivable here of 102.38. Save and close. Okay. So now just really quickly so that we can have an example, I'm actually going to go in and create an estimate and do the same thing for another client. So we have just some carpet and it's going to be 100. All right. And we're going to say retainage. Okay. Non save. We're going to create the invoice from here for the whole percentage. Okay. Save and close. All right. So now I have some extra balances in there, right? We've got quite a few things in this retainage receivable account now. We have all of these different accounts. So now it's time. The project is finished. I've built out the entire amount and I want to see how, how, how can I go in and, and make sure that I build out for all my retainage receivables. So first of all, you can run a report on this. So we can go ahead and do a, a quick report. Um, and you can see, you know, by name, we can sort it by name and you can see the totals here. You can also run a report, a custom transaction detail report. And we're going to say for all, and we're going to save for the account retainage receivables. And <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and display by, instead of total only, we want to display by customer. Say OK. So it totals up for us right here how much each, each job owes, or each job um, yeah, owes in retainage. OK. So now we're going to now we see this job is 100% complete uh, and you can also modify and filter this report if you're tracking your job information in your customer center complete you know that it's completed then you can run that report and filter by the completed jobs only as well. All right. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and create the invoice for this 20476. So customers create invoices to Robert Allard, remodel, okay, and the item's going to be retainage, okay. Now, notice how we have some other things in here. We have retainage 2, which could be the final billing for the 10% retainage so that we can have that, uh, we can you can have two separate items, retainage 1 when we hold it back and retainage 2 from when we put it in. That's an option that is out there. I usually just use retainage. And I say final billing, 10% retainage. Okay. And I have here from my transactions, 20476. All right. Non taxable. Everything is fine. I say save and close. Okay. Now notice that Robert Allard has. 102, 102, and then it's crediting out the 102. What this transaction right here does is it moves the 
balance out of retainage receivables out of that other current asset account into accounts pay receivable. Okay. So it's a pretty easy transaction there and it's a way to track it. So now just to finalize this, one thing that's really nice about having this as an other current asset account as opposed to an income account is that you can actually reconcile this account. So I know that sounds silly. So you say, what is my ending balance? I don't know. Isn't it supposed to tell me? So this is what we do. We go in and we're going to go and say reconcile. And always your ending balance is going to be zero. Okay. And don't worry about the statement date. You can change this around if 3.30 or you're doing it as of today. You can say that. Okay. Always make it ending balance of zero. Okay. So then we come in here. <clears throat> Let's see, you have, uh, let's see if we can change the columns to display. Okay, so if I change the columns, I'm going to check off that payee because I want to see who, you know, I want to be able to match it up pretty easily here. So I want that difference to be zero. So I come in here, I check off this guy, this guy. I have my 20476, check off this guy because we already billed out for that remaining retainage. And I'm going to go ahead and see the difference is zero. I'm going to go ahead and say reconcile now. Okay. So now when I go run my transaction detail report to see what's sitting in the, what balances are sitting here, I'm going to go to reports, custom transaction detail report. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and say a filter. My account is going to be retainage receivables. All right. I'm going to go ahead and just click on the display tab and say total by customer. Okay. So if I look at this, first of all, see how I have this little cleared stamp. So you know it's clear, but you're saying, oh, I've got thousands of these. I can't, I can't just, I can't have all those add up, add up, add up. So I'm going to modify this again. I'm, I'm actually going to filter it. And they have a, one of the filters is cleared status and we want to say no. Okay. Now it shows me only the retained receivables that have not been billed out. All right. So it's a way to make QuickBooks work for you uh, and uh, be able to still track that retainage through here without pulling your hair out.